Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever in the ages of all ages, amen. We look at the gospel of today, and we see the meanings of what the Lord has been promising us from before the foundation of the world. We look and we see how the Lord has called us to everlasting life, as you all know, and has called us to everlasting light, to be able to see and behold. So many people in this world are living and have not yet received that full potential, have not yet begun to understand the meanings of beholding this light. There are three verbs I'd like us to remember, or three meanings I'd like us to think of, or concepts today, to behold something, to believe in it, to become it, or to become part of that promise that was given to us. Think of these three words, behold, believe, and become. The Lord is calling us to do that, and He said so in today's Gospel. If you look carefully, in the, one of the verses in John 12, verse 36, He said, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. It's a three-step verse. While you have the light, what are you supposed to do? Look at it. Behold it. And once you've beheld it, believe in it. And once you've believed in it, you'll become sons of it and daughters of it. The Lord is inviting every person that has ever been born to enter this promise and this gift of being able to become a son and daughter of light. Becoming a son and daughter of light is not simply a label or a privilege or a title people receive. It is an empowerment, a fulfillment of what they've been called to do from before the foundation of the world. It is an opportunity for them to ful be fulfilled in this life, not in temporary things that they will not take with them when they leave this earth or this world, but in feeling like they are truly fulfilling the purpose God created them for, to transfer that light from Him to others as channels of His light and His blessing, not to their own glory, not to their own boasting, because the glory is to God. Even St. Paul himself being an apostle to the Gentiles, speaking and preaching all kinds of incredible, amazing, amazing things when you read through his epistles. He says at the end of Galatians, God forbid, God forbid that I should boast or that I should glory in my, anything other than the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. So think of these three steps. While you have the light, behold it. Then you believe in it. Accept it. Take that leap of faith. And when your faith is weak, say, Lord, increase my faith. I believe, help my unbelief. And then you'll become what you've been called to become from before the foundation of the world. The word behold is very important in the Christian vocabulary. I want you to notice there are many times, hundreds of times, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, where the word behold is used. Even when St. John the Baptist wanted to point the people to Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who bears the sins of the world. And we think of it, what does behold really mean? What does it mean to behold? The dictionary says to behold is to see or observe something, a thing or a person, especially a remarkable or impressive one. So whenever you're told to behold something, it's because this thing or this person is remarkable, is impressive. It's not something regular. Anyone who's tried to behold the sun cannot do so for long because it hurts the eyes, right? It's too bright, it's too dazzling. How much more the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are some people who are not willing to behold. Or they've given up on beholding. Or they don't want to take the time to do the beholding. Moses, when passing by in the wilderness of Midian and saw the burning bush, he looked and walked and then he looked again. And it's then that the Lord called him and used him for his purpose. That he became a son of light. Because he looked again and beheld this incredible scene of a bush that is burning and not being consumed. Every one of us is called to do this beholding, to look and realize that we're not looking at just an icon on a wall or a picture or a cross hanging somewhere in the house or in the car or tattooed on our wrists. We're beholding the impressive one himself. He who is almighty and created all things. This is what it means to behold. So think of this when the next time you're told to behold this light or behold the Lamb of God. St. Paul uses this word also by telling us in 2 Corinthians 6, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
This is a very impressive point he's trying to tell us. He's saying, this is now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till you're older. Don't wait till you think you're wiser. Tomorrow may never come. Actually, tomorrow never comes because there's always a reason tomorrow that we can't do the things we said we would do tomorrow. Don't wait till tomorrow. St. Paul is being very clear and blunt. He says also in Hebrews, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The heart remains hard when the will is selfish and self-centered. The heart remains hardened. But when there is a willingness to say, Lord, allow me and grant me to be fulfilled, grant me to behold now and think of it now and realize that now is the accepted and time of salvation. The word behold is again used in 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Again, St. John is so amazed. What are we and who are we that we will be given and bestowed upon such love that we will be called sons and daughters of God. Son of light, daughter of light. That's why St. John says, Behold, this is amazing. This is impressive. This is not normal. This is not what you regularly read about in your comic books and magazines and on the internet of kings and dictators and tyrants who are in control of a community or a country or a society. They don't want people to be like them. They don't want them to be sons and daughters of light. They just want them to be subservient and subordinate. But God raises dust and ash, breathes in it the breath of life, and gives it to be its image and likeness, and calls him and her my son, my daughter. I have died for you. I love you and everlasting love. That's why again when St. John says, Behold the Lamb, it's because those who receive this Lamb will behold and accept the invitation to them He gave the right to become children of God. If you're willing to behold, you will become. Behold and believe so you can become. To those who believe in His name who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of the man, but of God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Behold that wonder that God, in no other institution or religion on earth, does this make sense that God would become His creation to save His creation from doom doesn't exist doesn't exist anywhere because again there's only one absolute truth when it comes to the fact that God is the way the truth and the life and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and beheld his glory there's that beholding again the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth light out of light like we're going to say in the creed in a couple of minutes St. Macarius speaking about the apostles says the apostles being themselves light administered light to those who believe enlightening their hearts with that heavenly light of the Spirit by which they were themselves enlightened. Because the apostles themselves were willing to behold. St. Peter beheld one way, St. Paul beheld another, as you know. And every disciple had his way, and every countless people who have preceded us unto glory beheld one way or another. But they were willing to behold. Because they beheld, they also became channels of that light, just like St. Peter and St. Paul. Like a countless apostles and martyrs and witnesses to Christ. St. Paul tells us in Romans, he is not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. So if you're willing to behold, once you believe, the power of salvation is given to you. The power of salvation are not superhero powers. The power of salvation is being transferred from death to life. And there's no greater superpower than that to be transferred from temporary living to eternal living once we leave this transient world. St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature. He has, all old things are passed away. Behold, there's beholding again. All things are become new. Everything is new in Christ and renewed in Christ all the time. If only we would be willing to realize that our relationship with Christ is not a religious set of rules and regulations but a relationship to be loved and followed just like we love and revere our loved ones and families and friends in acts the apostles write for this is what the lord has commanded us i have made you a light for the gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth behold and then believe and then become a light to the gentiles become a light to everyone around you that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth and that's exactly what the apostles did this is a command from God. 
This is the will of God. This is actually the will of God for every human being who ever walks this earth. If only they will accept and behold. We pray in the fraction, and one of the fractions of the resurrection, may the illumination of your true knowledge shine upon us that we may shine with your living image. We pray and say, Lord, may this illumination, may this light that I behold of your true knowledge, of truly knowing you, shine upon me that I may in turn shine, become a son and daughter of light with your living image. Saint Ephraim the Syrian tells us, may the light of thy grace overcome the darkness that is in me. Very simple prayer. The spiritual Psalter says, may the light of thy grace overcome the darkness that is in me. A very simple prayer to pray with every breath, daily. May the light of thy grace overcome the darkness that is in me. The darkness of sin, of doubt, of lust, and everything of this earth. He also says, may thy light shine in my thoughts May they be illumined by thy rays and may thy magnificent radiance gladden them for thou art the sun that irradiates all. Way brighter and dazzling than the sun that is shining on earth right now. He also says, with all your heart hope in the, on the Lord and you will easily evade the wiles of the wicked one for the Lord does not forsake those who work for him or those who believe in him. Be sure and hope with all your heart that the Lord will not leave you nor forsake you. May God grant us to, to actually make that step to behold in order to believe, in order to become. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Then he was blessed.